Okay. Go on, then. on this week's prop show, we've got Ivan from Loop and Raj from Fix Yes, hello, welcome back. Just before we get started, there's been a couple of big player birthdays in the industry. So, Dim Brown, is your crumble Where's birthday? Where's the crumbles? Friday night dinner! Happy birthday for last weekend, mate. And also, the Batman. Dinner, 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 dinner,
to move forward to allow that to happen or that's the agency CRM so yeah so Raj has got a good point okay there's a trend in the in the world if you like for systems to connect to each other yeah. in a better more meaningful way is that that internet of things that's one of the things that can be plugged in so smart sensors into yeah. our system and that sort yeah. of stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah so if we take it back to the property sector you know I come from a background where we built a system that was somewhat closed yeah. you know we integrated with a number of third parties but that was hard work yeah it was hard work for, for us it was hard work for them and it was a little bit clunky mm. and i think if you look at a zero or a salesforce and you say to yourself i want to get my data out i want to do something with it let's say over mailchimp yeah. or i want to you know do something with it over here put it into my accounting system that's easy in a salesforce system yeah actually in the property crm space that's really difficult yeah it's awesome. and um it sometimes doesn't exist <coughs> well, and so why why is it difficult um well, it's not difficult. I think there's just been a, a slight lethargy from the providers to mm. um, proactively integrate. And maybe that's driven by fear when you dismantle effectively the data garden, if yeah, you like, yeah, what's yeah, in yeah. there, and you allow other people to, to work with that data, you are, you know, somewhat uh, reducing your position of strength. Yes. So yeah, yeah. That, that's an old school thing. <clears throat> so by having that standalone product, you you retain all of all of the control. That's right. Bottom line, it comes down to who owns the customer, and it's a very outdated way of thinking. Yeah. And yeah. Um, you know, the the new generation of software companies coming through. Um, are, you know, we we represent one of those where you know we're we're absolutely out to play yeah. with, with the data. Yeah. Connect with other systems. Yeah. Ultimately, the agent that's in control of their data. Yeah. And they should be able to do with it what they want. We just got to make that easy. So, what does Loop do then? Well, Loop is a, 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 I suppose, a next generation property software platform. Yeah. It's early stage for us, yeah. so we are just getting into the market. But one of the philosophies that we've got is to allow our end users to take advantage of the best of breed products. Yeah. And yes, that's prop tech. Okay, yeah. so that is uh, that's referencing, that's web services, that's portal. I, don't know, I thought you were just a prospecting software. Well, that's how we started. Yeah, that's a good point. And. Um, What's remarkable is I came out of a business that was pretty established and it had an identity and it had a brand and we knew exactly what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And then at Loop, we kind of spent a few months, it has to be said, trying to figure out what we were about and how we were going to get started. Sure. And, and, and that's difficult in a startup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The biggest issue that I find with agencies is that they don't want to go through the pain of swapping from one CRM to another CRM. Why do you think that is? There are, there are two main challenges there. The first one is data integrity. So if you're going to move them from system A to system B, there's this sort of fear factor that you're going to lose stuff on the way through. And um, that's happened before. We've seen it. Um, and there are technologies that help prevent that, mitigate that risk. And, and secondly, it's the upheaval, if you like, of all of those integrated systems. So my website has to change. My applicant registration form has to change. My tr staff need to undergo training. So that inertia to change is driven by fear and also just hard work. Mm. And actually, when agents are, you know, in a challenging market, they've got to get out there and start earning fees. Mm -hmm. And changing systems is often one of the last things they want to do. Um, so th th those challenges were there five years ago. They're there today. Do you, do you, do you think prop tech or CSI, more importantly, CRM systems are, are good enough and provide a good enough service for transition? I think some do. Yeah, like some bank, don't. You know, the banks have a swapping service. Mm. <coughs> well, it's never... funny what you were saying there, Oliver, because we spoke about this at the weekend. Like, all the banks offer the service, here's 100 quid, swap over to us, but no one ever does it. No. And it's really easy. Yeah. Like, but. Account switching needs to be easy, doesn't yeah. it? If you're yeah. moving your direct debits from Santander to HSBC, that is easy, but yeah. people don't do it for some reason, even though it's easy. People get, but people get stuck, don't they? We're not stuck, but people. Apathy. It's not necessarily right? It's yeah. just if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. Is 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 mm -hmm. is a good is an old adage, but mm -hmm. it's pretty a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. You know, like if, you know if you're you know take it to cameras. You know if you if you buy Canon all the time, you you you'll keep buying Canon and Canon mm -hmm. Canon. Nikon could bring out the best camera, like you know DSLR or, or whatever in the world. But I'm not changing to Nikon because mm -hmm. it's a total ball ache because I have to sell all my gear and I have to move things have to learn a whole new system it's got to be about value it's the though, same deal it? yeah people will move if the value is better off over here yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah we talk about next generation stuff this is about um repurposing the agent and helping them understand what's important for the buyers and sellers yeah. of today and tomorrow and often systems can support that yeah um a lot of the crms if you want to talk about the bad and the ugly a lot of the crms have almost stayed put as data silos 
So you put crap in, you get crap out. Yeah. And well, some, well, I just think it's just the crap goes in and no one does anything with it. Oh, it's difficult to get it back out, right? Mm. It, it kind of like, mm. surely the CRM should work for you, not for it, and it should be chucking stuff out, saying, "Hey, here's an opportunity." Mm. Absolutely, yeah. And and that's about ha having the agents understand where they should be spending their time, and yeah. CRM is going to help with that. Well, Raj, your system's pretty smart, isn't it? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you know? I, I, I on the sofa. I, I always ask people, "What's your favourite prop tech?" If they're in the prop, and and his name and his bloody so, name is mentioned. But Fixflow, Fixflow has that, doesn't it? Fixflow has that integration. So we work with about forty different software systems around the world. Yeah. Um, but I think that so to just go back to what Ollie was saying about software, you switch it when it's due to poor value, or you look for better value. I think people actually switch because of philosoph philosophical belief. So. Um, do you believe that your software system is there to constrain you and tell you what to do, or is it there to enable you and empower you to do more? Um, if, you're in that, if you're in that second category, then I do not believe there is a single software provider in the market who will keep up with every modern technology trend mm -hmm. over the next two, five, seven years. Why did you think Zoopla bought or property, you know, PSG? Because, um, you know, if you think about it, is there seven or eight main CRMs and they've got five of them? That's right, yeah. So they, they um, effectively uh, swallowed up the footprint. Okay, and what that means is they recognise the value in uh, owning the property transaction and, and the data journey that a property takes. Mm -hmm. So when you acquire a CRM system um, and you acquire a number of them, what you get is market insight. You get, crucially, the appraisal data. And then you effectively start to get triggers around when people are about to move. Now, if you're a, um, if you're a Zoopla, you're interested in those points because you can monetize them. And mm -hmm. we've seen that with the introduction of MoveIt and the eProperty file um, and the integration of uh, uh, money.co.uk. What they're looking to do is uh, get a reach into the customer's life and monetize it on the way through. Are they allowed to use that data though and sell it on to someone else though? Because that's agent's data, isn't it? It is. Look, it's a gray area for me. I don't know what the specific specifics of that are, but um, I think you know, that's, that, that principle is grounded in the fact that some agents proactively use financial services, for example, others don't. Mm -hmm. And there is an advantage to um, allowing that data to be used, repurposed to monetize if there's some reward coming back the other way. And, and that's the value proposition that Zupa have put down. Okay. So uh, I think it doesn't work for everybody, but that's the, that's the strategy behind what they've done. Yeah. So, so talking we... of um, good in, Good in, bad out, or bad in, good out, or whatever it might be. Got to go. Yeah. A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff coming out is, enables agencies to generate new business. Mm -hmm. So it allows them to prospect, allows them to drive more people to them. Yep. With all of the software and all of the stuff available to them, and right move and Zoopla and on the market generating stuff for them, you know, does, is it is it making people bad at prospecting? You know, Great are, question. You know, are, so honestly, are, are they bad at it? Yeah, I think I've seen. I think I've seen it all now in, in my work at GPX, but more recently work at Loop. We see companies that want to prospect but don't know how, mm. all the way through to they see it as the lifeblood of their business, and they embrace all types of prospecting. And they're actually quite clever at uncovering opportunities that uh, to you and I just wouldn't be there in the first place. Mm. So, if we go for a middle ground, w what we see is. Um, a degree of prospecting which is um, fairly crude if I can say yeah. it's about yeah. throwing volume at the wall and hoping that something will stick yeah. basically um, A5 flies yeah. through the door saying hi can we use this right and, and, and this uh, absolutely look and there are uh, there are there are a ton of every time you have to stop using my mouth I'll some of our women viewers don't have willies and they can't be this big or that big yeah, but it's when they took out right move in telegraph saying, look at our market share. We're yeah, I mean, school. we were talking yeah. before we came in here about yeah. like... Is that in the green room? In the green <laughs> room, yeah. It's a different <laughs> green room. It's a grey room. But about using newer prospecting, like everyone's doing leaflets. Why not do like a social media campaign? And, you know, people like Paul Long, as everyone knows, can get your, your clicks per video down to like a penny or 5p. And it's like start a shift of... I mean, we were talking about it the weekend at John Paul's gig, weren't we, about agents using the money they've always put into certain areas, whether it's right move or, you know, traditional print advertising, mm -hmm. and actually thinking, well, for six months, let's take a punt and do this because the eyeballs yeah. are here, the eyeballs are there, yeah. and everyone else in our town's doing that, so let's differentiate. So. I think if the goal here is to win more instructions and grow our market share, mm. then there's a whole piece of work that has to happen before that, and one of those components is prospecting. Mm -hmm. 
Chris, you spoke um, a couple of weeks ago about you know engagement, engagement leading to interest and attraction, yeah. that leading to trust, and trust leading to conversion. Yeah. Now, prospecting is in there somewhere, but prospecting from a one-dimensional throw A5 flyers through the, through the post, mm -hmm. it needs to be more than that now. Yeah. The value proposition needs yeah. to be stronger. Yes. And we see from our data and from the, the agents that get success off the platform that it's, it's more about uh, the pricing strategy that sits behind taking a property to market. Right. So regardless of fee structure, regardless of whether you're online or high street, if you can demonstrate your pricing strategy is sympathetic to the vendor's needs and circumstances, you have a good shot at selling their house, right? Okay, that's the yeah. bottom line. And, and so, and that, is that, what does that look like? Do you break it down for the customer more or do you give value in advance before asking for a fee or like the actual pricing structure? Or? Yeah, so I guess like you would do in any business, you're trying to demonstrate credibility. That credibility is based on, in our industry, properties you've sold before, heritage in the market, yeah. um, success you've had for other people, testimonials. It's all of that endorsement piece that sits around that as well. Sure. And then prospecting is simply just uh, the offline version of eyeballs. Eyeballs is nothing without conversion. And what yeah. conversion is around pricing strategy and, and, and delivering a great service. Basically mm. putting the ass on the right price so the bloody thing sells. Awesome. That, that would be useful, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah cool. Yeah, sure. Right, well, that'll do for me for Ask the Prop Show. Um, do you want to find out what I'm out of the ground thinking? Who, Steve? Yeah. Steve from Edgeware, what are you saying? Steve says! People always need houses. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, cheers, Steve. Always insightful to see what he's going to say, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so speaking of prospecting, uh, we have Ish, hi, Ish, and Simon Whale uh, from, well, Ish. Prospect I didn't mean engine. to do that face when anyone says something well, I go, like, because I was thinking, I was thinking he's going to say something super inappropriate. Like, bought, someone mentioned someone, it's like, 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 it's, 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 like, it's like, it doesn't do that. It's almost like, 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 like a tick and me just go, like, like, like when you get a quick. bought Brexit t-shirts down to the studio the other week because I didn't know which <laughs> one to wear on, on the show. <laughs> it's like when you get a, it's like when you get a quote from a, like a garage or a plumbing and go, <laughs> <laughs> Whaley's here. Wait. Hi, Simon. Anyway, those guys, those guys were in last week, and here's a little snippet from one of your chats. Ish, a lot of people have been talking about Prospect Engine. Mm -hmm. What is Prospect Engine, and what's you and Simon got to do with it? Well, Prospect Engine is an outbound sales service okay. uh, or bolt-on to existing estate agency models offering lead management and prospecting services uh, for uh, booking in valuations and listing appointments. Okay, so when did you start it and more importantly, why did you start it? So we started, uh, well, we're just about to enter into our third year. Okay. So we started two years ago, uh, 2017 in March okay um, and the whole uh, concept or the whole reason behind setting up Prospect Engine uh, was reading an article about Foxton's generating 40% mm. of their business from their historic database and um, with my previous business um, Properties Unique uh, we had around 95% occupancy we were a service department and corporate housing business um, but I had shed loads of historic data that was never really worked because we were dealing with low hanging fruit so I, I, I was uh, sort of uh, guilty of, of not working my database as well as I should um, so I thought Let's set up a company that does just that. Okay, so spring of 2017, when did this reprobate come on board? Uh, shortly, uh, very well, very early on, uh, yeah. really. Um, I think do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, sorry? of course. I mean, why, why did you join? Why did you join in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mr. PropTech Guru uh, invested in probably the most analogue of all, of all services. Um, I'll tell you what it probably was. I, I, I've been as guilty as this as uh, almost every supplier in the world. You'll, you'll know these wonderful words. You just need one more instruction to pay for this. Mm -hmm. I heard myself say it a million times. And actually, the thing about this business is where you're, you're paying for the vast majority on it purely on the fact that you are generating those appointments was, you know, from a salesperson's point of view, the easiest one there. Uh, listening to all sorts of uh, brilliant consultants and uh, people like Josh Fegan, Mm -hmm. He who controls the appointments, gets the most appointments, gets the most appraisals, usually wins the day. Mm. And this is what that's all about. And for me, there's, it's very simple. If you look at this here, it, salespeople are usually openers or they're closers. doesn't matter where you are. There's very few that can, can straddle both, both Unicorns, sides. Unicorns. Unicorns, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
because we're not talking about Brexit now, Chris. <laughs> Leave that alone, please. It's time. It's time. Honestly, you stop going on about it. You, <laughs> you're really doing people's heads in. So, I, I, my old my old compadre Peter Fenwick was you know the best closer in the business, and I was always exceptional at opening the doors here. And a lot of that runs through true with estate agency yes. as well. And I would suggest the vast majority of people are the ones that like to right. Let's go and close this down now, and they. Don't focus on the rest of it. And it leads to a, a complete feast and famine regime. Yes. You know, you're busy, busy, busy. You don't prospect. Okay. Nothing in the diary. Then you prospect the hell out of it. Interesting about prospecting. Very well. interesting. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, just, just for the record, uh, do people pay you to come and chat to you? Ask these boys. Do, do you have pay, you paid, have to, you be paid to be here? Absolutely not. I've not no. paid at all. There we go. Perfect. Because, uh, yeah. The a, only payment we receive is... Free tap. This and is an socks. awesome fl- fluffy <laughs> is... gavel. Oh yeah, speaking of, let's 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 thank our show sponsors. So uh, thanks to One Dome. One Dome. Ollie's uh, right. taking one of these Pop pairs on. for the car. Yeah, yeah. One Dome. <laughs> okay, so thanks One Dome for the glasses. I need another pair of these in the car because my children keep stealing them because uh, uh, they love them for the. Hop- they are cool they for kids. Uh, cool for kids. Yeah, yeah. and uh, also uh, Yondel for the for the free uh, the free socks. They, they were on the other week. Yeah, they were on the last week. So lads, here's a pair of socks for you. Take them away. Cheers, Yondel. You can have those. You both want green. You can have green. We've got others. There's loads. Loads. You can have them both. Green. Little Yondel shelf. But yeah, Money Penny also did great socks, but they've not sent us any. So there's a pair behind. Yeah. yeah, I know, but it's the only pair. Yeah, it's the only pair. We need some more, please. It's on the wall. Of, it's on the wall. That's it. There's no more of the money penny socks. You can't have those. The interesting thing is why we do this is that basically we just do it for a laugh, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> because it I get gets to, us no yeah. business and we don't make any money. But, but, I get hey. to, but I get to like look at crumble and wear a face, so yeah. happy days. Um, why do you think we do this? Oh, I don't know, just a bit funny. I'm not asking the guests. Yeah, laugh. Oh, okay. Why do you think we do it? Question um, the guests. Ooh. You do it because you enjoy it. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And anything that good that comes out of it is a happy byproduct of having fun. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. That's our mission yeah. statement. Yeah, everything we do <laughs> has a, the happy byproduct. Have a laugh, <laughs> have, have a laugh, get some work. Awesome. I mean, to to give you an idea, the, the cost of producing this show for the whole year mm. will be will be significantly less than having a stand at one of the shows. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. Oh, of course it would. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. And the amount of goodwill that that is generated, and the amount of attention. Yeah, and engagement and yeah. socks and yeah. socks and free glasses. Okay, and in and, every car. And this is the interesting thing: is we've actually adopted this into a state agency, where a state agents are actually doing a show format on their town, mm. and getting twenty to twenty-five percent of their population logging on to their Facebook page yeah. to watch their weekly video. Yeah, Lewis yeah. Thorogood in Bourne, absolutely nailing it. And like I say, it gets a quarter of the, his town's yeah. population yeah. Watching, watching 18 minutes in yeah. 25 Yeah, minutes. I think the interesting thing for video is it's um, it stays with someone for longer. So actually, you might not be picking up instructions as an agent right there and then. No, but you no, get no. It six, nine, twelve, long time. Yeah, it's the long yeah, yeah. Well, it We're too, sh- too focused on the short game. Well, um, Troy Malcolm said it's, it's like leaving your digital fingerprint. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're so yes, people who are going to do business with you. Like, say I was going to do business with Fixed Folk, I'm not a letting or a state agent, so I wouldn't. Um, I love you, Raj, but uh, there's nothing <laughs> I can do. Um, but I mean, the reality is, I think that, he's got a product if, for you but, somewhere. But you, <laughs> but people who yeah. will be looking at working with Fixed Folk or working um, with you, Ollie, will will research you. They'll find a bit more about you. They'll see what you're doing online. Mm-hmm. They'll have a look at your LinkedIn profiles. They'll see who you've sold into. They'll talk to other people in the market. Recommend. I'm thinking about. Rec- I see this all the time. Think about using fixed flow. Anyone got any recommendations? Oh, Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, really yeah. good, really good, really good. Yeah. So you get all of that social proof. They find yeah. out about you. They see yeah. your face. You know, and they go on and do it way before. We well, said they four, ever pick four up to the six months, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. completely. And, and, and they feel like they've met you, but you've never met them as a customer. It's great. And what's yeah. the, 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 and do you know what the, the, the real reason we did it for is? <laughs> Shoots and giggles. Shoots and giggles. No, because because when people when people say when people no when people say when they, when we're out at events with with Chris or wherever we are, I'll at the S. I'll the conference. Um, uh, and people come up to you and they go they go, oh lads, hilarious show last week. Yeah, it literally makes me feel super happy. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. The only well, we leave this room thinking really like five yeah. people in the room have watched it being yeah. filmed and no one's yeah. watched it outside of the camera. I but... had someone at um, the guild the guild conference and they're looking at me really funny. I was like, why are you looking at me? And they're like. You're missing the face. That's it. <laughs> you the face, but without the hat. Did you put that on there, you are. Well, this yeah. is going down to Sandfest in June, and uh, the ledge that is Tom Panos. I'm is hoping, they're going to well, sign I'd it. I'd like him to sign it. I'm going to buy a new one just for that, and I'm going to get him to sign it. 
Yeah. Oh, lights. Oh, lights. Oh, light. <laughs> yeah, or maybe I should put a cork on. Oh, Call Tom yes. Panos interview. Oh, my. Stereotype. I know. But. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, back to actual. Back to reality. The show. Um, oh, for anyone who uh, didn't know out there, just two or three weeks ago, speaking about video, YouTube viewing figures and clicks have just outweighed YouTube. Facebook. Sorry, Facebook did I say YouTube, YouTube and YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's remarkable, they've outdone each other. Wow. Wow. Well done, YouTube. <laughs> no, Facebook and Zuckerberg's billions that he's pushed into video, yeah, they've just outstripped viewing figures on YouTube. Uh, we should share, share with you some, uh, some importance when it comes to videos. We need okay. a Stato hat. Okay. <laughs> we need, like, you know, like a, the bet with a betting slip in it. And coming up now, it's... <laughs> uh, four lengths off the leader. <laughs> okay, so I think it's fair to say that I'm a practitioner when it comes to videos. Yes, you yes. are. Yes, and you are. Like, what was the, what was the phrase? The um, the, and the, the it's the, the Netflix of property. Netflix of property. Hashtag Profflix. There you go. <laughs> Trademark that. Yeah. You, you need to keep that one. Profflix. <laughs> okay, and big lesson for you guys out there that checking your videos out. When what I've learned is this huge tip. Sorry, number one. If I upload a video to YouTube and then take the web link and share that on on social media, if I get fifty views. You're doing I'm well. Doing well. You're doing well, yeah. Okay. If I physically upload the video to Facebook or LinkedIn, a bad one gets 2,000 and a good one gets 10,000. Do both. Because? Well, no. So what I do is this. This is what you do. And, and I'm about to drop in another huge tip. It's like a Lancaster <laughs> bomber. We need, we need the sound. Where's the, the sound? Oh, hang on. Where's the sound? I've got one. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Ready for the bomb. Ready? No, not I'm ready. yet. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> ready? No, I'll do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's going to be good. This is fucking amazing. <laughs> hang on. <right. laughs> hang on. Drum roll. Go on then. Top tip one. Okay. Okay, so you can face me. High, okay. high quality. I mean, the production manager threw the roof today. <laughs> it's like the Blue Planet 3, isn't it? Come on, come on. Give us a stick, give us a tap. Right, okay, so a uh, big top tip for you is this. Go. Is whenever you have got a video you, and you, you want to share it in three groups. Yes. Make what, sure. like a bring and buy in Grantham group? And, yeah. yeah, so that's just, so um, as an estate agent or... Upload it three times to the individual groups. Right. With different file names. Nice. Why the different file names, Chris? Because if it's the same file name, right move, uh, sorry, Facebook will think it is uh, the same video and might share it out as much. Okay. Algorithms. It's all about the algorithms. I mean, you two yeah. must know a few okay. things about algorithms. So, and what I used to. <laughs> and another thing is, don't use the same text every time. So you know you put the video in and then the text. Yeah. Don't do the same video. Oh, like a different header. And, yeah. And... Okay, here's another top tip for you. Okay. Is, um, so I've got a video. So I post stuff on estate agency pages really? on Facebook. Yeah, no, she's you. <laughs> you. You make a bit of video. Yeah, I know. Sometimes. Is, is it is is that if you post them all at the same time, they'll all go there at the same time. So what I do is I open up three tabs, upload all three with different file names and different text, but I will only publish one straight away, wait, keep that second tab and third tab open, but not, and then hit publish an hour later on the second one, and then wait another hour and hit See? publish. Zuckerberg, you thought your algorithms were all the time, my friend, but they've just been breaking. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that called content dripping? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. It's does, more of a, a lava sound, flow with yeah, walking. I mean, the content dripping doesn't sound very clean. Does it? <laughs> no, that's why I nearly didn't say yeah. <laughs> so it. Sounds this like is a show to say it on. Yeah, oh, there we go. Content dripping. Okay. Hashtag content dripping. <laughs> okay, if we're giving you great tips, do you want some more? Uh, no. No, oh, go on then. You do one more tip and I'll, we'll all try and think of one tip okay, each. Well, one I know, tip, that, I know the video tip. gets prioritised based on the length of time someone stays on that video. So yes. if they're failing after four or eight seconds, yeah. that's fed into this algorithm. Yeah. If people are staying yes. on a 90-second video for 80 seconds, that, that bumps it up. Right? Oh, that's, that's, that's awesome. Okay. That's a good tip. Right, yes. that's it. Okay, so make, for, it, make it powerful. So for estate agents watching this, yep. Really important that why don't if you are going to put a video in, put a two second uh, JPEG in at the start that has the name of the town because people are scrolling through. But make sure. In fact, I'm going to leave that there and you can just press the. Okay, um, but make sure that you don't put the name of the town in the centre because it will be um, what's named up, yeah, covered up. Right. So basically, just knock it down a bit. Clever. In the bottom yeah. lower yeah. thirds. Yeah. Man's on fire today. He's on absolute yeah. fire. Mic drop. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, cool. But, um, next question. 
Well, we're sort of well, out, off the board. Yeah, but we're sort of out of time for questions. <laughs> we're out of time for questions. Otherwise, no one will watch to the end of the show. Oh, we'll save that for the next time. Yeah, we'll save it for the next time. Right. So uh, we'll have one more question in a minute. Okay. So if anyone wants to get hold of um, of Raj, find out more about Fixed Phone, which we've heard from agents firsthand, uh, is a fantastic bit of software. Um, you can get hold of Raj by oh, he's just visiting. Everywhere. Uh, www.fixflow.com or just google okay. Raj or just google Raj yeah. and he's got a little crown on <laughs> okay. like sitting on his like mother purple throne whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ollie if you want to get hold of you talk to yeah, you about Loop yeah just go to loop.software it's, uh, it's a new domain I like it's not a .com it's a dot .software yeah. well, that's yeah. a good yeah. dot .software I like that what Glamour. we'd like to have is a few more estate agents on the show yes, yes we, we spoke to uh, Ollie and Alicia yes. in JP's boot camp a and month ago the Batman and the Batman who's and supposed to come Holly. Da, 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 Batman Batman the only problem with that now is we now have to keyframe Alan's head so that's well, more, just more just that that's more work for Jess so Sorry, Thanks, Jess. Jess. Cheers, Jess. But no, if you are um, an amazing estate agent, if you've got something different about you, whether it's the way you market or prospect or just run your agency. You want to tell the world. Do you know what would be really cool? We want you on here. Do you know what would be really good? To get someone on from Humberts now that they've pulled away from the high street. Yeah, but I haven't I've got my plus fours. I'm not too, I'm not posh enough. I can. I went, Chris to, can. I went to a nice school. Yeah. yeah. Chris has got a what, what. What, and, what. <laughs> Okay, take that bit out, Jess, because we don't want them on the yeah, show. Yeah, don't move. They don't want numbers. No, they don't want them on the show. Take okay. this bit out. No, take this um, bit out. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll just put the bit where I talk about the Batman before Chris picks up the car, because otherwise, total nightmare. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, should we have one more question? Should we have one more question? Should we talk about the telephone feedback? I've got nothing to say on that. But no. Raj, it's your, it's your topic. I mean... No, uh, let's just say because uh, you just about telephone feedback. Legislation. Okay, what about what about your survey that you had recently? What what sublime question uh, findings came out from that? Okay, uh, okay, okay, that okay let's or? let's come back to that in a second. Okay. 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 So uh, Chris has had um, both Raj and Ollie uh, in the big studio doing uh, chats with them. If you want to find all of their video content, have a look at what they've had to say um, about their companies, but also about the wider property market. Please visit uh, Chris's YouTube channel, which is here. Well, no, um, it's easier just to go on YouTube and try Chris oh, Hawkin. Oh, I hope there's a sucky in. Yeah, that'd be cool if there was just a sucky in. Who can reverse the switch? <laughs> cool. Uh, but yeah, please go and have a look at those. Um, there is now something like six, seven hundred videos on there. So you, yeah, it's just under 700. So, yeah. so if you're sick of Peaky Blinders, um, <laughs> go and see Watkin. Uh, one final oh, question. Now, here's a huge... This is something that blew my mind. I, I Huge tip. Get the bomb ready, kids. More tips? More tips. It's okay. this side. It's this, this side. side. No. No. I convert the audio into a podcast. Yeah. Do you really? Yes. So you're using pillar content to create other forms of... All right, Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> But this is this really weird thing. Is all I do is just take the audio and put it out there. Yeah, agents could do that because on a bad day I get five hundred view listens, listens, and a good day eight hundred. That's good. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's, amazing. that's quite good. Well, a lot and of people I hardly push it. We were yeah. talking about audio books for in the green room before we came right. in. But a lot of people, a lot of agents we've met over the last sort of year or so, Sunday. they listen to put Sean Newman. Yeah, they listen to it and the uh, podcast on the way in the cars with Watkins or okay. Stephen Brown yeah, and yeah, yeah. Andy yeah. Overmans and because let's be frank here, a lot of people don't like video. So if they don't, who want... are they? No, yeah, turn no. off. <laughs> no, but actually, don't don't like doing it. All oh, right, sorry. Yes. So, so why don't they, if they, if agents why don't they get their mobile phone out and use the voice memo function on on phones? Yeah. And record it. Just mm -hmm. two of them people chatting. hate the sound of their own voice more than mm -hmm. they. Well, yes. Hate yeah. the face. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, if you're not very good on camera, doing some on voice. True. I mean, I think there's a there's a market. I mean, podcasts almost. We're around 10, 15 years ago and then nosedived oh, and then what? come back about again. Five to 800 a day. Yeah, yeah. Think about well, it. A lot of people with the AirPods now, Sanjay, Sean Newman, they're, when they're walking the dog, they have the AirPods. You've got to make that deliberate switch, haven't you? Because we, uh, back in the first business, we hosted a load of websites and on there we'd have blogs, right? And the, yeah. the agents had the ability to go in and add blog. Uh, articles. Uh, the problem there is it's a bit like doing homework, isn't it? It's it's content and yes. it's writing yeah, content yeah. about. If only we knew a content writer. <laughs> Chris, any ideas? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. But it's got to be relevant to one off. All the stuff that you uh, No, about. that's the right that's one. That's the right one. Yeah, that's the right one. But people are, the point is, people are consuming content in a different way now, aren't they? So yeah, because reading is audio, deemed long and boring. It's just difficult. But yeah. yeah. It's just difficult, isn't it? Do you know what it is? I don't think it is. I think it's just the immediacy of society now. You know, I quite enjoy reading for leisure, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I, know I do read for business, obviously, because we have to. But um, it's time consuming. You know, mm. if you're watching something video wise, you get a lot of information quickly. You do. And the same if you're listening to an audio book, you know, you, an hour of dead time where you're walking the dog or you're right. in the car or whatever, yeah. you're filling sort of dead space or dead time um, with that content. Yeah. And that's what we say to people who come on our video training courses. Yeah. So I don't have time to make video. It's not that they don't want to, it's so they feel they don't have capacity to do no. so. Yeah. So we say, I call that fill, bullshit. Fill, no, yeah, but we say fill that dead time. Mm. Fill the dead time with doing it. So if you're in it's the car... because they're afraid. If you're, if you, you're in yes. the car... Sh if you're in the car and you're out of viewing mm. and you're 10 minutes early, do it then. Or if you've arrived to an appointment and your client's late, do it then. Sure. You know, and just fill... And it's the same same principle. Just yeah. fill in that dead time with... I mean, content. we've all been there. You look at a video online and it's the, it says it's 14 minutes, 19 seconds. You think, oh, really? <sighs> Have I got time for this? If it says 2.09, you go, I'm in on this. I'll watch yeah. it. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. same with podcasting, I think. It's about the but depending on. But now, this is, now, this is going to blow your mind. My best, view, best viewed videos are over 30 minutes on each. We're not engaging and entertaining the audience. So that's... It's adding value. Here's, here's a huge tip. What you do is this. I create mini trailers. Yeah. 30 second bite sized pieces. So we get Jess. Hi Jess, wonderful lady. Basically, That's four mentions. She didn't want to say. What you do, here's a huge tip for you for videos. We won't ask any more questions. It'll be all right. Tenant fee ban. Let's be honest. Get your bloody head out of fucking bloody ostrich like sand. Do something about it. You've heard about it in two and a half years. Systemize. Yes. Use fix flow. Yes. Okay, better marketing. And buy something from Ollie. Yeah. Right, yeah. I've, I've found you put your fees up. Yeah, put it's your like fees up. Fees, but never there you go. Yeah. Enough said. I tell you what. Well, Sandy Lawson mean? does a wonderful course. Yes. That's amazing true. course. That's true. Yeah, and she basically, you basically say to the landlord, this is what you, I agreed at 10%, this is the service you got. To, uh, five years ago, this is the service you get now, you pay more. And that, on, on that, Katie Griffin at Sword in Harris is remarkable. It's is she? Engaging through video and podcast stuff right. about specifically tenant fee ban. Do you have to watch? Cool. Well, who did we meet the other day? And they said they uh, chatted to an agent. It's someone who came here and they said they were chatting to an agent not two months ago and they still weren't sure whether the tenant fee ban was coming oh, in. Um, we hear that they, they were not, oh, we're not sure if it's actually yeah, it's coming not. in or not. We're like, guys, I'm not even in property, it's coming. <laughs> It's coming. There you go. Cool. Let's leave it at that. So thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Roger. Thanks, thanks. Ollie, for thanks, guys. coming yes. along. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you <laughs> our wonderful viewers. Now we, sh we shall uh, shalom. And uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks to our wonderful viewers. So uh, cheers from our sponsors. Thanks, everyone who watches. And shalom!